Well, hey folks, welcome back to the shop. I hope you had a good Christmas. Today we've got this Road King on the lift and we're installing a quick release backrest right here. Now you might be saying, well, why are you doing a video on installing something so simple? I mean, you got a bolt here and a bolt there and it bolts into factory holes. I mean, what's going on? And then you open up your package and you find about 3.5 million screws, bolts, washers, spacers, nuts, plastic stuff. And then you're like, well, maybe the instructions might help. So you open up the instructions and things are missing. Instructions are missing. Diagrams are like I, 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 from outer space. And you soon realize this is a terrible idea. So maybe that's you. Or maybe you just have nothing to do today and want to hang out. So let you and I get this backrest installed for this customer and just have a good time in the shop today. Welcome back to Butler Customs Motorcycle Shop. Well, the first thing a fellow wants to do is just take a moment and just soak in these details, these instructions. And you'll very quickly realize that they're terrible. I mean, when you look at the exploded diagram, this might be the only saving grace in it. But still, this looks like, okay, a front docking kit installed alone, front docking kit installed with rear docking kit. What? Then you've got kind of a layout of how everything goes, but when you try to start reading the instructions, they are, oh man. They're just terrible instructions. I mean, I get it where your number one step is to refer to the service manual and follow the instructions given to remove the saddlebags. I can deal with that. Remove fender support cover on the sides um, that has the air fittings, which on this bike would be on the left side. Remove air fittings from the bracket, discard the bracket. So it does start off, okay, we can do this. No need to watch a video. And then it gets back here and you're like, okay, the front docking kit's installed alone. Install the 5 sixteenths dash 18 times one inch, 25 millimeter long screw in the upper front hole, and then install the one eighth inch, 3.2 millimeter thick spacer. And, and you start, you're like, what? I don't know, which is what? I mean, I've got bags, I've got bags. Do I have to measure everything out? Can I just eyeball it? Then you've got, well, if you're a FL, uh, HR, it's this, or LFHT, it's this, FLTR, it's this. So here's what we're going to do. We're not going to read any of this. What we are going to use for reference is this right here. Since we have two bags, I would assume that we have the front docking kit and the rear docking kit. So this is really all that we're going to use today. Now, I didn't buy this kit. The customer brought it up and there was no labeling. I don't know if this is HD or not. And when I think about it and look at it, the uh, bracket, the mounting bracket on the backrest bracket looks used. It looks uh, like he got it from somebody. And it's missing the back brace, which he says he doesn't want on there anyway. But uh, huh, the person riding doubles would beg to differ. So let's get started by removing these saddlebags and just kind of see by our exploded diagram, maybe what we're gonna to need to use. I just don't see us using all of this to put a quick detach on a bike. I mean, guys, I've installed 
several of them, and I just don't remember having to have a master's degree in nuts and bolts to put this together. Let's go ahead and get these saddlebags off on both sides. We know they'll have to be removed. Now, if you're ever worried about your saddlebags coming off on you, if you put a lot of weight in here, or if you're just worried about somebody stealing them, if you park it at a hotel or a motel, uh, these are easy to, to uh, come out. You know, these little pins here, I'll show you, are really easy to break. And um, you could lose your bags going down the interstate. I've actually had to replace a couple bags because of that. And I'll show you why. The reason for that is these little pins right here. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this pin is about gone. This is the only thing holding your bags on your bike. So you can imagine putting a couple gallons of milk in the bags and riding down the road on a Harley that vibrates, and this is what you got. These will break, and then your bag falls off going down an interstate, and then a minivan runs over it, and you've lost all your milk and you have to replace your bags. So I use bagger bolts. Bagger bolts will replace this little clip right here that just slides out. And then you can slide in a threaded like nut that clips. I don't know what they're called, clip nuts, I don't know. And then you can just take a regular bolt, an Allen head or half inch bolt head, whatever, and run in there and then your bags are bolted into your bike. Really cheap upgrade. You don't have to buy the kits online. Just go to your hardware store. They'll have the little threaded nut clips that clip up in there and they'll have the bolts. Really doesn't matter the size as long as it fits through the hole and through the hole in your bag. So I usually try to match up about the size of this. And you can even reuse the washer here uh, for your bolt head. So really good tip to upgrade if you've got Harley bags um, because you will lose them if this starts to happen to your boat or your, what are these called? Twist thingies. Now this kit also come with these kind of adapters that the quick release sets on. And also this bracket with the rear and front holes for your air gauge. This bike only has the rear, uh, so I'll, we'll be putting it in the rear hole. And you can see that there is zip ties here, and that's because he lost a bolt, maybe both. No, just one. He lost a bolt in his light, so we'll be putting in a new bolt as well. So I'm going to try to follow those instructions best I can, but um, they're kind of hard to understand. And they don't give a lot of pictures or step-by-steps. And I'm kind of a visual guy, so I need the pictures. But I put these on before. If you're having trouble, that's what this video is for. Step one, remove the bags. We did that. Success. Step two, remove fender support cover on side that has air fittings and save that. Save that for installation. I suppose that would be this. There we go. They don't leave you really any room to put a socket on it. So we'll Get a ratchet and wrench in there. All right, and that gives us access to everything we need up here. Step three, remove the air fittings from the bracket and discard bracket. So it seems like we won't be using this anymore. And now I can get my 
bit off. There we go. And I will need to take this off. Okay. Wonder what Tom Cruise is doing today. He's probably out jumping out of an airplane off a motorcycle or something. Step four, remove and discard existing screws shown in figure two from each side of the motorcycle. Save the washers from the bottom screw for the saddlebag bracket installation. So what we're going to be removing, if I'm looking at this diagram correctly, and screws number three, this one, we're not going to need the screw anymore, but we will need the washer, and that washer doesn't look like a very good washer, so we'll be uh, replacing that with a new washer. So this said to save the washer, but um, the washer's not really even a washer at this point anymore. It's just a sliver of metal. Out of the back, this bracket fell this, which is supposed to snap into there, and it wasn't snapped. So I'm not sure why it wasn't turning. So we'll have to remember to put that back in as well. Well, we're doing pretty good so far. We've made it to the next page, and here's really where it gets weird. Now, it did say to take it off on the other side, so I'll go do that now. Step five, position the mounting bracket, number one, on one side of the motorcycle. So how does that, what is that? Position motorcycle, the, position the mounting bracket, one, on one side of the motorcycle. Mounting bracket one. Is it one on figure two? See, this is where things get really weird. Mounting bracket one, is it up here? This is labeled number one on both diagrams. So, see figure eight for install the mount bracket as follows. Well, it goes to figure seven, there's no figure eight. So I think this is either missing the page. I've got figure one, figure two, figure three, four, five, six, seven. And then tables, two exploded views. No figure eight. So, we got to kind of, I guess, look at the exploded view and try to figure it out. Okay, we don't need this setting down low like this. We want it up here. So, we're going to only be doing the front docking kit number one. So, still in that though. Front docking kit install alone, see figure eight, which we don't have. Install the mounting bracket as follows. 5, 16, 18, one inch in the upper front hole. But we still got to remove this and probably replace it with a longer bolt. And install the one eighth thick spacer on each screw between the mountain bracket and the original equipment saddlebag support bracket. So we're going to put a gap between that. So let's get our mountain screws out. Now I'm guessing that one bag is for a rear kit and one is for a front kit. And I don't know which is which. Seems like this has a little bit more and longer longer bolts than this kit does. So I'm going to say this is our front 
and this might be a rear. So I'm going to put this down and start with this because it does have the spacers in here, both front and rear. So we'll try, we'll start with this. I'm just going to lay these all out where I can see what's what. I wish they'd have done this. You know, I'm not going to be standing on the back side of the bike working on the other side, so I wish they'd have flipped this because this bracket right here, this is actually pointing toward the front, and then we're working this way. So it's really, a, you got to pay attention. And these kits work on a 97 FL no matter the model, all the way up, except for the Ultra Classics, I believe. Running that through, putting our spacer on, and then running this back up in the hole. Okay, we'll stick this back here. All right, I did put some blue Loctite on these. Place between mounting bracket one and original equipment saddlebag support bracket A. I'm gonna lose my mind. I think I'm just gonna go with what I know's right instead of trying to fill in these, trying to follow these crazy instructions. This is just crazy. So the way I have it here, I know that that's gonna be my front can you see that? Yeah, that's going to be my front mountain docket right there. This is going to come down and be my rear right here. So this does line up with this hole. So this is going to be what I'm going to run my rear mounting to. Okay, so to put the mounting, the rear mounting on, we're going to go two inch bolt flat washer, the mounting spacer with the plastic in it, one eighth inch spacer, lock nut that's going to go on the back of all this. I think that's going to get us right where we want to be. Yep, I'm happy with that. So as you can see, that gets us lined up there with that hole where it needs to be and I, I really don't like how short this is especially with if you're going to run with no backrest uh, how, maybe he just wants it to tie stuff onto or you know hold something down with some um, you know elastic straps or whatever but but it's awful short you know considering where somebody's back is going to be it's really just to keep your backside from sliding off We'll go ahead and get our air hose, air fitting back on. And since there's only one, it really doesn't matter what hole it goes in. So what I'm going to do is actually install this, clip it in. Then I can see how close this sets to this. Now, I'm not sure why they had us take this off in the instructions. I probably wouldn't have because this actually goes in. I, don't, I really don't know why we had to take this off in the first place because there's really, you really didn't, from what I see, you didn't have to do that. Now we can put our backrest back on just to see. How close this is going to set to this chrome piece. And once this chrome piece goes in, there is going to be a little bit of a gap there which is good because these need to be setting in there like so. Now we might have to put some spacers behind here. You say, well, I don't understand because it looks like it's tied up against this right now. However, on the other side, it might be sticking out, <laughs> you know, two inches. So we'll have to, we might be adding some spacers in between there, but we won't know till we get the other side on. We'll run that back in now. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this loose for now because when I set my bags on, 
Then I'll move this up to wherever the pin is. Put the pin in. Then I can reach back behind here with a wrench and tighten this 7 16 nut or bolt up. So this leaves me a lot of room for adjustments. I don't want to set this where I think it might go. Then put my bag on and try to twist my bag because that's unnecessary pressure on the bag. When you set the bag on, put the pin through, then whenever the bag sets where you want it, you tighten that nut up. From what I can see walking over here, uh, it looks to be lined up pretty daggum close there. So I think we're going to be okay and not have to space anything out on the side we just did. The only thing left on this side, besides putting our bags on, is putting this rear bracket back on. Remember this? That fell out. Well, I've put all this back together and forgot about this. All this got to come off because I got to remove this to get this back on. We've got to take this off, which is actually two mounting points here. Now, you will see these break off a lot because there's a lot of stress put on this joint right here. If you have saddlebags and you're going on a trip and you pack your saddlebags down, all the stress is put right in this bend. So you'll see these break off quite a bit. Uh, so we're going to take these two out so that I can get this in the back of this, not this hole, but the one above it. Um, maybe I can just loosen them and, or take this one out, loosen this and it swings. Hey, that's a good idea. Let's try that. There we go. Now, instead of taking this one all the way out, my saddlebag bar falling and support and all that, I think that I can just loosen it and then this should come down. Good deal. Now we can take our little nut thing that goes up on the farthest one. We can clip that in, and that does not stay in good. What if I turned it the other way? Okay, well, that's not good. This tab is broken off. And so, that is not going to stay in at all. So if I go to run a bolt back through, it's going to pop off and fall down again. So what do you do in a situation like this? Well, fortunately, I can take this bracket, take the air hose back off again, <laughs> the air fitting, and go ahead and put my bracket on. And then when I raise this up, this will raise up to get these bolts in. And so I can do that and not have to worry about this falling down again and taking it all back off again. So let's put that on there. So I will put some blue on it because it's a Harley. Everything vibrates on a Harley. Now, because these tabs are broke, this is starting to twist on me. So what I'm going to do is probably get a pair of vice grips and hold it so that it doesn't turn. It doesn't have to be tight. It just has to hold it. Are you kidding me? This isn't a 7 16 It's not. Don't tell me they're millimeters. Yeah, they're metric. 10 millimeter. Come on, Harley. I'll line my other bracket back up. I'll even probably run this through just so it stays at the proper height. Run this through. Now, as I tighten. I know my holes are lined up. So now with this mounted on there good, I can just slide these out. I'll re-thread lock these. And then I will slide these spacers in these holes. <laughs> I'll slide this up. 
and then hopefully I can just go right back in the holes there. Now, wait a minute. Daggummit. I have messed up again. Did any of y'all catch it? I'm an idiot, as you can see. As my wife will tell you. So guess what? Yeah, the reason we put that extended bolt in there huh, was so <sighs> that we could put that back on that we didn't do. Why didn't you tell me? Come on, fellas. Or were you just sitting there laughing? Maybe that's what it was. Went and got you buddy and said, hey, come here. Look at this guy. Now I'm gonna set this where it's tight, but I can still move it. it because there's not gonna be a way to loosen this back up once this is on, because this is spinning free. Now, are we ready now? All right, now we can put our valve back in. I'll tell you what, I spent half my life looking for tools that are right under my nose. Let's put this back in. We'll take our bag, set up here, and then we'll see how close we are to everything. Slide our pins in. The pins on this side look pretty good. Put that pin in. And then we'll see how close we are on the back side. Hey, pretty close. Pretty close. 7 sixteenths back here and just tighten up this front one. The back one is already tight. That's so not going anywhere. There we go. So now all we have to do is repeat on the other side. And now that we know what to take off and what not to take off, it should be a little easier process. However, this as well broke when we were taking off that mounting bracket on the end. So we're gonna to have to do the same thing where we take these off and swing it out uh, again. But we know now we don't have to take this cover off. So that's good. And I don't think we even have to take this off as well. So we can leave this mounted where it's at and do the fix on this. We will have to take this nut off or bolt out and then it should be fine. So. They're new and they're tight. And man, you could pick up the bike with that. I'm very happy with that. So all we have to do now is throw the bag on. I did find in the shop a, a good clip. I'll of course ask him if he wants to go with the bagger bolts, but as of right now, we'll just put these back on. We didn't move the front, so it should be set fine. And we got pretty good on the back here. If I do say so myself. I never really liked how close these bags ride on these seats. And as you can see, it causes rub and wear, and when you try to get this off, it's hard to do. Never really liked that design. Of course, this is the older design back here. The new one buttons, one levers, one finger levers in here are really nice. I believe in 14 
or maybe 12, 2012. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. But I think they went to the one finger bag release in either 12 or 14. And then this whole thing flips up. Um, really nice upgraded design as compared to the older style. But these are classic, man. They use these for, gosh, years, years. Some of you Harley experts let me know what years ran these weird like clamp down and you can lock it, but you could drill that out easy and get in here. As opposed to the one finger, I think in the one finger they went with uh, a different design to open up and it's really nice. So, well, thank you guys so much for hanging out in the shop with me today. As you can tell, when we kind of threw this away, we were able to get it done quicker. Of course, the exploded diagram helped quite a bit. And without that, we really would have just been guessing. And the kit did come with these. Now these are for a tour pack that you'd put back here for your pack to set on. And then with the pack comes a backrest usually in it. So he didn't need these. Um, I guess he just didn't know. And as you can tell, they look pretty slick on here. And I think he did it more for just cosmetic looks than actually functionality. Because if you were to set on this, that'd eat into your back. So, but overall cosmetics of the bike it's really nice if you don't hang your foot in there getting on the bike we'll fix up his blinker that's easy just a missing bolt there so i'm not going to bore you with that but thanks so much for hanging out in the shop with me today i hope maybe you learned some things of what to do and more importantly what not to do tell your mom and them i said hi